You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. So what kind of games can we actually play? Let's start off with this. Maybe just the most important part of actually of an emulation box like this. The Astana 5X3 is not like a huge boost compared with the older models. But when you're looking at like, say, the possibilities and overall emulation performance, it is a significant upgrade. In the beginning of this video I mentioned a couple of things that didn't work. But I don't want to focus on that what won't work and also more focus on what can we actually play. If you're looking into the really old stuff, Atari, Commodore 64, Amiga, the Emmy Alec in combination with the S905 X3 is absolutely a great combination with a lot of potential and we can play these games without any problem whatsoever. If you just love those 8-bit and 60-bit games like me, you are going to be in for a treat. Simply because there is so freaking much that we can play now. Think about the Sega Genesis, 32X, Sega CD, Super NES, the normal NES, and there is absolutely a lot that we can play on the 8-bit and 60-bit era. And don't forget of course PC Engine, and then of course the handhelds itself. All the way up to the PlayStation 1. Yep, so combining all of those systems, all of these generations, all the decades of games, yeah, we have like thousands of different games you can play on, let's say, such a cheap solution like the S905 X3. And I think that is one of the most appealing things. Of course, what you need to take consideration that the limitation will be in the newer generation. Think about, there is no PlayStation 2, there is no GameCube, there is no Wii. You know, that are the, like the systems, if you really want to play something like that, these cheap boxes is not something you should get. But, when you're looking at N64, they were having like a mixed performance, where some games will run decent enough to enjoy, where some games are completely unplayable. I think the biggest disappointment when it comes to the S905 X3 boxes is going to be the PlayStation Portable. The overall performance is so bad and so glitchy, this is not the experience you want to have. So I think that is something this should just need even put on a box like this. And of course the internal resolution. In other words, when you're going to be like internally like upscaling it, the games will look so much better. One of the systems is PlayStation 1 that will benefit so much, but the S905 X3 is not really capable of doing such a thing. So, so when it comes to let's say native resolution gaming, that is the only thing we're actually going to be getting when it comes, let's say, to other devices like PlayStation 1 and PlayStation Portable. And when you're going to put a box like this on a huge television, oh man, it looks absolutely awful. Concluding that these boxes are just great when it comes to let's say the old school stuff and if you want to get into the high-end stuff in the future more expensive mini PCs will become cheaper so we're going to have more cheaper let's say faster solutions but for now when it comes to this say the S905 X3 it's still one of my let's say favorite devices and it has a lot of potential okay but let's talk about the cases and everything you're getting inside the S905 X3 game machines because while you're thinking this is the same kind of product, you will be disappointed and sometimes you're surprised. The reason I'm saying disappointed and surprised because you will be disappointed with some of them have horrible cases and horrible, let's say, pieces of software or main menu software, where normally you would say the S9 5 3 will run on Emulalic. Where some of the boxes have been stripped off and they say basic Emulalic, they have been like messing around with the firmware, software and making it like more like their own. The downside to that is that we're having all kinds of weird variations that didn't run great. Some of them, of the let's say the boxes look kind of cool, and they were just basic, completely new PCBs with the S905X3 on it, with some extra cooling. So there we have so many different solutions, and even this crazy arcade stick. Yep, they made an arcade stick of the same chip, so the same result of the the same emulation overall performance. But it's kind of cool. If you just want to experience some old school arcade gaming, this would be another, let's say, great way to go to. So you don't have a game console because the game console is built in the Super Console Arcade. Where the first generation didn't came with the X3, they basically listened to the video it seems to be and they released an X3 with more power. So that's also one of the reasons I want to implement this piece of product in my video over here. I reviewed all kinds of models and this is an S905 X3. For the people who have no idea what I'm talking about, this is a chip that they're using that has a lot of potential. Also the model is quite interesting because you can basically put it on top of your monitor. Inside the box we're going to get not a lot of stuff, we're going to get ourselves the box itself and this is what I mean. This is the white edition, we have all kinds of versions when it comes to colors but also sizes. It's a very interesting concept and yeah, already mentioned you're going to put it on top or 
we can basically put it on bottom part of your monitor and this is very compact and a very cool design but let's take a close look at the software itself so this is not your typical MULX slash TV Android box that they made. This is something unique beside the point that you can put this thing on top of your television. I think it looks pretty cool and maybe this will be one of these boxes that you can use very often. And yeah, and that I'll have this, this box in the way and it doesn't look that bad anyway. All right, so let's take a close look at the software itself. It's a typical software that I've seen before, only slightly different and not in a good way. So at the right part, which you can see over here, we do have the naming, but it scrolls from left to right and it's a little bit of a difficult thing to read and search for your game simply because not everything has been displayed. For example, having here F0X. So F0X is a short name, so you can read it. But like say all the other ones, you need to wait for it to start scrolling. A little bit of a bummer. So next up, we do have history or basically what you have played before. Then we have the collection says fire or better said like the favorites. We do have the search function. Let's see how this actually works. Let's see how this works. It works a little bit slow in my opinion, all right. And then we do have like the category and here we have like a quick overview of what we can play with it. There are even like freaking three pages. Or that's about a saying, there it is. And let's take a close look, what can we play? Okay, so the first page we have PlayStation Portable, PlayStation 1 and 64, Game Boy Classic, MAME, Famicom, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Classic, the Mega Drive or Genesis. Then we have Super Famicom, Atari 20, 2600, 7800. Then we have like Mega Drive, Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, so even PC Engine in here, and they have another SNES. I think like there's a problem with like basically double SNES list, but there are like different regions. So it's a little bit confusing and a little bit messy. And I was really curious, like on the picture they showed Ken Hank and here you can see like that's the thing that they're doing, showing a very nice custom made thing. And I don't know what's going on over here, what you could see like, this is not original. That's a quite interesting design. So basically, that I think it's not original. This this piece that they put between it. So Ken Hank with the logo and everything. We can remove this. So that's quite an interesting design. Yeah, yeah, I already said it a couple of times. Okay, it used to be 3.0, 2.0. We have RG45. We have the HDMI out, optical out. There is yeah, there is more like AV out, but this doesn't work. I can already tell you that. Then we have an input for 12 volts, but all right, let's plug this bad boy in because I'm really curious about it. And damn, this thing is heavy. Where this later model, the Super Console X3, came with a completely redesigned case. It was like an Android box where they stacked up something special. It's kind of weird, but they tried some extra efforts. The menu and so far, I have noticed the Emmy Alex software is still the same. So there was no like major, uh, let's say, changes. The software itself is just what it is. I really love the front end. Maybe sometimes you will lock down the menu, but besides that, it seems to be all being configured correctly and looks very nicely. However, this was the weirdest, let's say, box I have ever seen when it comes of all different models. The construction, they put some really nice effort in it to get this thing some cooling with this tiny fan, but it's not also overall like extremely loud, putting all kinds of, let's say, special parts on this Android box and yeah the overall construction i don't know how durable this is going to be but it is kind of interesting to see just to open it up and unplug everything yeah what a cable mess man oh man oh man so where all the super console models are basically based on android i must say that cube edition is kind of looking like a cool version like it's an let's say an nes only on steroids so then we have like the cube x3 and yeah this is the new version also with the older version we do have like four usb ports at the front so absolutely a great addition and for me like this is i think one of my favorite ones when it comes to like giving a little bit of a console feeling come also with this very big warning sticker that everybody needs to see so do not plug or unplug the usb controller while powering on Oh, okay. So at the back we're going to get all of the connections. Then we have like the AVL port over here. Then we have like an USB 3.0 port. Then we have the SD card that I was putting a sticker on. I don't know what's going on over here, but yeah, okay. So <laughs> I already broke the seal. But then we have like the HDMI connection over here, RG45 for the internet. And now we have the input for the 12 volt power supply. And I already mentioned the on and off switch over here. But let's bring the old cube to the party and let's do a quick comparison.
Okay, so the first thing that it indeed like changed out is that we're just going to get like a different name at the front. I'm happy they did this, otherwise it's going to be quite confusing. Both have like the same kind of like setup at the front with the four USB ports. So the case in general is in my opinion the same. We do have like a little bit different when it comes to this carbon or they just put the sticker in a different way. But that's basically where we're going to get the same sticker at the left, at the right there's nothing. And at the back we're going to get stuff like the same kind of lineup when it comes to the connection. Only though having with the new version over here we have like the usb port at the back so it's kind of cool that we have an extra port also when you're looking at the depth where the sd card is in like the older version over here it also has like a completely different light way you can see like this sd card maybe me like a little bit nitpicky it's sticking out a little bit so from the outside they didn't really change a lot besides having like one extra usb port 3.0 i think it's an upgrade that's pretty damn cool but let's take a close look at the system itself but okay, so when you're looking at this like, layout, I must say that it looks quite nice, to be honest. And it's a new uh, MEL -like layout, by the way, for the people who are wondering. But when you're looking at the game compatibility, there is so much stuff you can basically add to this and play and have a lot of fun. That is something we're going to do. We're going to rip it apart because I wanted to see what is in the inside. Because that's maybe the most interesting thing about this. So by opening up, I must say they did some changes when it comes to the main board itself. But also when you're looking at this, where you have seen like all of those Android or Super Consoles where like typical Android boxes slapping into in just a new case, they did something new and exciting to be honest. Here you can see like they have like a completely redesign of the main board and even implemented like a way better fan and cooling. Like how it's comparable with the older model, that is something we can do maybe with a video in the future. But for now I just wanted to take a close look at this. Also, when you're looking at the overall, let's say, the quality of the build, I think it's done very well. Here it shows in the deed, like, it's the S905 X3 version 12 or something, made in 2022, 0805, all right. So, basically, when you're looking at it, they are trying to improve it. The only thing I wonder is, like, this thing gives it cooling, but where does it get this fresh air? Because there is a ventilation over here, which you can see, but it is very limited. A long-term favorite of mine is this Super Console X3 max plus man this mouthful but it was a very cool piece of technology where it comes in a very cool box including an active cooling fan and at the front even a display that didn't do a lot because it wasn't communicating with the software amyalic but it had a lot of potential especially with all of those boxes were heating up at the time it has also been used as an android box really not recommended because they were using these weird let's say rooted devices before let's say playing the games we had two different variations with the colors and two different kind of style of game boxes. Both with the S905 X3 in the inside and I think it had a lot of potential. I think the biggest downside was that it didn't have an on off switch. Okay guys, so let's do a quick teardown. So the cases are very easy to disassemble. The only thing that we need to do is get ourselves a multi-tool kit from AliExpress for example with a very tiny embus, otherwise you cannot get it open. There are only like four of these embuses that you need to remove and you can just lift up the top cover. So let's cut it over here and I will show you how you need to do this. So what I do like about it, it's just a basic fan they're using with the normal two pins connection so if you want to basically replace it with something else you can do that fairly easy or if you have any problems if you just need to replace it you can get your one from your local store or maybe aliexpress you can replace it remove four screws and you're done done with it so these plastics can be removed this one goes a little bit difficult but okay so what you can see already here is that this is just a basic tv box that we have seen before only they removed the old casing and they slapped it in the new case so i must hand it to them they're trying to improve on a low budget way the other model that was released was the Super Console Arcade. So it was a hybrid of an Android game box inside an arcade stick. The idea itself is pretty damn genius. So you can plug it in and have more like this Pandora's box overall experience. Only with so much better overall as an emulation performance. Where Emi Alec is so much better. Built in turbo mode. And what I understand if you can use this thing actually like an just game stick itself. But beside that point. I just wanted to focus on the S905 X3 on the inside. The device also came in two color variations, more of this 8-bit style and one that's completely black. They didn't put any checking on the box, but here you can check, check out that we have the game console and stick and just an arcade stick. So the idea was that you can buy one with a console on the inside and plug in a second one and have a two-player or maybe four-player configuration. That's kind of cool in my opinion. There are two different colors out there, a completely black version and this 8 bit clone 
one more better set famicom layout i think it's pretty damn cool we're having all the necessary waters for playing every single game when it comes to arcade then having the joystick over here the joystick is just a typical chinese long travel joystick nothing very special and then of course we're having the buttons the buttons are your typical let's say chinese long travel cheap buttons Beside that, nothing bad of course, and here we're having all of the function in combination, turbo, home, mode, select and start. But everything that you're going to need for playing games and emulation, this is just more than enough. So at the back we're going to get ourselves an AV out, it's kind of funny they're still adding this to it. And then having the USB out, HDMI out, then we're having the RD45 input for the power supply and a separate on and off switch. That is very convenient because not every single game box has this. And of course, a Type-C connection. And for the Type-C, they're also going to give you this extra converter from Type-C to USB 3.0. So with the Super Console Arcade X3, we're just going to get us already mentioned at the beginning of this video. The S905 X3 comes with 4GB RAM. The ROM file in total is 32GB when it comes to the Android box, not going to need it. And then we're going to need a minimum of 5V 3A. It looks like a pretty decent power supply. It does have not a really nice weight to it. It feels kind of plastic. Fantastic. The S905 X3 is the, the new chip that they are using in this new version, and but that also means that we're going to get a different MU Alec version. In combination with the Hyper Max V8 skin, and of course MU Alec 4.5, we're going to get some new cool looks, but also we're going to get ourselves new different things that we can do with it compared with the older Super Slicks arcade stick. We're getting these things back. But let's take a close look in the inside, what we're actually going to get with this. Because if you want to replace or upgrade anything, it's not going to be any problem whatsoever. And that is what I really like about these things. At the top part, we're going to get ourselves a basic connection. And you can replace them with a Samba joystick or whatsoever you want to. So that's going to be absolutely great. So replacement of the joystick is no problem whatsoever. Then the joystick is the same story. They did great cable management over here. The cables are all the way going to the encoder board that's implemented in this part of the joystick. We can just replace every single thing and you can just upgrade it if you want to. So at the bottom here we're going to get a very interesting thing. That we're having a metal plate for some extra weight. And it's a little bit of cheating of course. But on the other side it's great that they're doing it. Because it gives the thing so much more stability on your table. Over here we're having the tiny cable goes from the PCB on the top over there. Or the encoder board. And they're having the tiny cable goes to the Type-C port at the back. And here we're having the main board. The main board has now an active fan, absolutely great, and also implemented an extra protection that there are no cables can get into the fan itself. So that's absolutely cool. So the main board is kind of the same measurements when you're looking at the previous Super Console Xs. have been attached to the plastic with a couple of screws here and there. Okay, let's get them loose if you want to. So we can remove the main board itself remove the cable this also goes to the same pcb and the inboard it looks kind of funny it looks also the same like the ones that came out of the android boxes or the super Console first editions the last release is actually the best one they have ever released the super console x x3 pro from the ken hank group so this is absolutely like an android box you can just see it in many different ways but why was this thing actually the best one out there? That is not because of the fake 8K support, blah -de blah Ultra HD. No, this thing has absolutely amazing cooling, two external antennas for Wi-Fi capabilities, and an off ports, and an on-off switch, and very good cooling. You're looking at this box itself, yeah man, it's absolutely massive. Two huge antennas, that's also a great improvement. Simply because we're having so much better Wi-Fi, not that we're going to be actually needing this for online play whatsoever. But in the end, it's absolutely great. So let's open it up and do a sneak peek in the inside. So the overall construction of this X3 Pro, I'm just going to be honest, I wish they just did this at the first time they was releasing so one of these boxes. Because when this thing doesn't have like active cooling, the cooling overall is just great. And this is actually what we're going to be needing. So when you're looking at the first generation that has like these very cheap plastic boxes, it was absolutely, some of them were absolutely just horrible. Now they are absolutely learning from their mistakes. The question remains how they are getting this open. Do I need to put a power tool between this or can I just be removing it? Hmm. 
what I was really expecting. Okay, so first of all, so the thing what I love about this, that we can actually have an active drive in this. You can upgrade this with an SSD if you want to. Can I just pull it out? So the hard drive has been assembled with four screws in the bottom part. So no, that's not going to be an easy task. So let's remove it from this side. Okay, that gives me a little bit more wiggle room. So another thing I wanted to check out the internal part. So first of all, when you're looking at it, it's the same construction with the same kind of RAM chip modules and everything else. But of course, we're having two antennas over here going to the back. Another check thing I wanted to see is how is the cooling done? Is there any is there a cooling paste, thermal pads going on when it comes to the other side? Let's remove the four screws that holds everything in place. The overall construction has been done very nicely. So there's nothing to complain over there. So let's remove this and let's see if I can lift it out. Or is this going to be a problem? Oh man, this cable comes really in handy. Let's be very gentle with the cables of the Wi-Fi antenna. And let's lift it out. And okay, that's actually the way how they did this. Okay, so that is the thing I wanted to check out. So this is the chip itself. It's indeed an S905 X3. But the thing that they actually did is that you can see in thermal paste, <laughs> it even has the imprint of the chip itself. But it basically makes communicate or it transfers the heat through this thermal pad. I'm not going to touch it too much to the part over here. And this top part of the case is basically one passive cooling block. So that it just get the heat transferred from the PCB to the case itself. So what well, you have seen the temperatures, it's not absolutely bad at all. So if you're searching for a solution to emulate, the S905 X3 is absolutely a very cool chip. It's not the best out there, but I think it's a great balance when it comes to the money you're paying for and, and the performance you're getting. Of course, we will have like a lot of problems with N64 Play Support and all the other system we've we talked about many times before. But still, it's a very cool deal and it comes in different many form factors. Thank you all for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell and it would be great to see you in the next video.